Welcome my dear students and YouTube viewers to chapter 5, Thermochemistry. In this video I will teach you the diatomic elements. But first we begin with a hilarious chemistry cat of the day that I stole from quickbeam.com. Now that we know the elemental symbol of sodium is Na, we can get or understand this joke. Na 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 Batman! <laughs> okay, if you did not understand that joke, then I invite you to watch this link that I posted in the description below as well as here somewhere to another video that I don't own copyright for because it's kind of funny. Okay, after this chapter is all over, now by that I don't mean just this video but this, this entire chapter 5, you will gain the following skills. In other words, after this chapter is complete, you should be able to know and memorize the seven diatomic elements, define the following vocabulary terms that I will not read to you here because you can read as well as I can, know what a state function is, explain the concepts underlying reaction enthalpies, and make calculations using the thermodynamic equations we will discuss. In addition to this, you will also be able to perform calorimetry and specific heat calculations, calculate the delta H for a multi-step process using the delta H values of the individual steps, and use enthalpies of formation to calculate reaction enthalpies. So in an earlier video, linked to in the description below as well as here somewhere, we learned that atoms are the smallest particle or unit of an element. You can think of an atom as being like a single piece of a given element. In their simplest formula then, most elements can and do have a single atom formula. For example, elemental sodium's formula is Na, just one atom. Elemental cesium's formula is Cs, also just one atom, and so forth. Such elements are called monatomic elements. Now, there are, however, some elements that do not exist stably in nature as uncharged single atoms. Instead, these elements, called diatomic elements, pair up. And for you, my university students, I require you to memorize them. Here they are. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These seven elements. And in fact, if you look at the periodic table and box all of them in, they look like the number seven over here to the right, as well as this floater hydrogen over here to the left. So those are the seven diatomic elements. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that these seven elements in their simplest form, or formula, do not exist as single atoms by themselves. Instead, they exist as two atoms bonded together. For example, in its simplest structural formula, hydrogen does not exist as H. There's no neutral H floating around anywhere, okay? Though H plus and H minus ions do exist and are possible. Instead, hydrogen in its simplest form, that's neutral, uncharged, exists as two H atoms bonded together. In other words, its formula is H2. And the same is true for the rest. Nitrogen's simplest formula is N2, not N. Oxygen's is O2, not O. Fluorine's is F2, not F, and so on down the line. H2, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. So as far as you need to know, we will assume that other than these seven diatomic elements, the rest of the elements' formulas will just be monatomic. Now, please note, some people, for whatever reason, think that helium is diatomic. It is not. Its formula is just He, not He2. 